Has the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration fixed the problems in how it measures motor carrier safety? We're discussing the agency's recently proposed changes to its safety measurement system in this episode of HTT Talks Trucking. The FMCSA has proposed some significant changes to its safety measurement system, which is how it prioritizes motor carriers for enforcement. What will those changes mean to trucking companies? We're going to talk about that with our guests shortly. Before we get into our discussion, don't forget to follow us on social media, subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss an episode of HGT Talks Trucking. Back after this. Scraper Systems by Right Height is North America's leading name for automated rooftop snow removal from truck fleets. Safely clear 24 inches of snow and ice in less than 30 seconds. Scraper Systems fleet plows help reduce winter risks, protect your brand, and get your fleet on the road quickly after a snowstorm. Machines are available to ship today. Contact scrapersystems.com for more information. I'm Deborah Lockridge, and joining me today on HTT Talks Trucking to talk about this question is Brandon Wiseman. He's transportation attorney and president of TruckSafe Consulting. Hey, Deborah, thanks for having me. So trying to uh, recap a uh, about 13 years of history uh, in a very short capsule, FMCSA rolled out the safety measurement system as part of CSA 2010. It wanted a way to predict which motor carriers were more likely to have crashes so it could target its enforcement efforts on those companies. But from the beginning, there were complaints that it didn't accurately predict crash risk, among other things, and that led to lobbying and lawsuits. And in 2017, Congress ordered the agency to do an independent study. Uh, National Academy of Sciences did that, recommended something called Item Response Theory, or IRT. I don't know about you, but I had never heard of that before that point. Um, But in the end, FMCSA decided not to go in that direction, and so now it's proposed some significant changes of how it does evaluate motor carriers. Them not got it? Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. (laughs) So what, you know, in in your review of the regulations and and what you work with uh, motor carriers, uh, the proposal, what are maybe the, you know, the top five biggest changes that you see in it? Sure. Well, first off, you know, as you said, it, the reason this is important to pay attention to if you're a regulated carrier is because this is the system that the FMCSA uses to prioritize regulated motor carriers for enforcement. FMCSA is a relatively small agency. It does not have the workforce to be able to um, to effectively enforce its rules across the 700,000 plus motor carriers that it regulates. So it has to prioritize the um, the highest risk motor carriers for enforcement, usually in the form of an audit uh, and then a potential revision to the carrier safety rating. And so the way they do that is by gathering data from roadside inspections that are conducted by uh, you know state law enforcement into a centralized database and then to use that data to essentially prioritize carriers. And the way that it does that currently is by um, uh, measuring carriers across what are called seven basics. Uh, That stands for something. Uh, Behavior (laughs) analysis and safety improvement categories. Um, And that has been the system, as you said, for uh, about 13 years now. It's it's remained relatively unchanged over that time period. Um, and as you said, it's it's a been a pretty widely derided system for a number of mostly legitimate reasons. And so what the agency is doing now is figuring out how can we tweak the system to make it better at doing its job of prioritizing the highest risk carriers and hopefully um, minimizing highway accidents involving large trucks and buses. That's ultimately the FMCSA's mission. And so these changes that it proposed this week can essentially be broken down into into five main proposed changes. There's a few more that are that are more minor, I would consider them more minor, but essentially the five big changes are number one, they're they're contemplating um, reorganizing those basics, the seven categories that 
every motor carrier, regulated motor carrier, is being measured in. Number one, they're going to change the name of it, so we don't have to worry about that acronym. You don't have to worry about what does BASIC stand for in the first place. (laughs) No, I'll never have to remember that again. I'll be glad for that. Uh, They're just going to call them safety categories, uh, which is what they are. And uh, how they are considering reorganizing them is, you know, first of all, the current BASICs that we have now under the current system are unsafe driving, crash indicator, hours of service compliance, vehicle maintenance, drug and alcohol, hazardous materials, and driver fitness. So they are considering consolidating some of these and splitting some of them off. We're still going to end up with seven, but what we're going to do is we are going to move the drug and alcohol category underneath the umbrella of unsafe driving because the agency says that, number one, we don't see a whole lot of drug and alcohol violations discovered during roadside inspections of commercial motor vehicles. So there's just not a whole lot of data in that category to begin with. And more importantly, what we're really looking at when we're dealing with a drug or alcohol violation is an unsafe driving practice. So it it fundamentally is unsafe driving when you're dealing with a drug and alcohol violation. So that category is going to be brought under unsafe driving. We're no longer going to have a drug and alcohol testing or drug and alcohol violation category of its own. So now we've got six. Where's the seventh one comes in? Well, what the agency is proposing doing is splitting off the vehicle maintenance category that exists currently into two separate categories. It's going to be a vehicle maintenance category and then a vehicle maintenance driver observed category. The reason they're doing this is that vehicle maintenance is the largest of the seven basics. It has the most violations uh, in it of all of the seven. And so it's becoming difficult to really draw any significant conclusions from the data in that basic. There's just too much in there. What, what we're considering doing is breaking that off into those two, those two sections. So what, what do those mean? I mean? That was one thing that I was read. I said, I'm not quite sure what the difference is there. Yeah, so when you think about vehicle maintenance violations, we're talking about, you know, the common suspects, brakes, lights, tires, things like that. But you can kind of think of maintenance violations in two categories. You can think of them as maintenance issues that could have been discovered by the driver had they done a thorough road uh, pre-trip or post-trip inspection as the regulations require of them, and also vehicle maintenance violations that weren't necessarily discoverable for the driver, uh, by the driver in a routine inspection. Things that are more latent, um, uh, things that could only be discovered by a mechanic, for example, in a more thorough inspection of the vehicle. So we want to separate those out so that um, we can really get to the root of the problem. If it's a, a vehicle maintenance issue that the driver could have discovered, then the root of the problem is the driver not doing a thorough enough pre- or post-trip inspection. Whereas other violations, other vehicle maintenance violations, couldn't have been discovered by the driver. So the root of the problem is not so much... Uh, with the driver, it's it's more of a um, a mechanical issue with the truck, or one that should have been discovered in a more thorough um, you know annual inspection or something like that. So we're splitting those off into two separate categories, and that takes us back to seven total uh, safety categories. All right, so we got new categories, combining some categories. What's number two on your list of biggest <laughs> changes? Number two is kind of consolidating and reorganizing violations. So one of the big criticisms with the system as it exists now is we've just got so many potential violations filtering into the system, 959 to be exact. Uh, Currently there are 959 separate violations that could be discovered roadside that are filtering into the SMS account and then getting distributed across the seven basics. So what the agency is proposing to do now with these changes is to consolidate violations that are similar to one another into essentially 116 violation categories. So there's still going to be the potential to be written up for these 959 violations during a roadside inspection. But when you look at it on your uh, SMS account going forward, the ones that are similar to each other are going to be combined into 116 violation groups to make it a little easier to understand, again, what what we're dealing with here. Are we dealing with hours of service violations? Um, Because it's a little hard to tell now when you're looking at 959 separate potential violations. If we group them together, it's going to be a little bit easier to look at. 
Um, and then the idea is that the agency set, puts it this way. If a motor carrier receives more than one of the violations in a violation group during a single inspection, the new methodology would treat that set of violations as a single violation when calculating the carrier's measure in that, cat, in that safety category. So if your driver incurs a bunch of um, violations in a roadside inspection that are all essentially kind of getting at the same root conduct, even though they're written up under different violation codes, we're only going to punish you once instead of seven times for essentially the same root problem is, is what this particular change gets to. Okay. All right. So that's number two. All right. Moving on to number three are simplified ver uh, violation severity weights. So anyone who's dealt with SMS currently, they, they will know um, that all violations that get put on your, your account carry a severity weight of between 1 and 10, depending on how serious the DOT thinks that violation is. DOT thinks, that's a key term that, there, right? That was another major criticism with the current program is how subjective the severity weights yeah. are. And the FMCSA, to their credit, they acknowledge that that's a problem and that hey, we are just making an estimation of how serious we think these violations are, and then we're assigning severity weights to them. You know, obviously the more serious ones carry a heavier weight, and therefore they impact the motor carrier scores more dramatically than the more minor violations. It makes sense to have something like that built into the system because you don't right. want to be penalized for a more minor violation in the same way that you're penalized for a, a significant violation. But the way that it was done currently was very subjective and it was overly complicated according to the agency. And so what they are doing is proposing to simplify this so that rather than having severity weights of one to 10 for every violation, you're either going to have a severity weight of one or two um, that are assigned to the violation groups that we just talked about. It's either going to be a severity weight of one or two. The ones that carry a severity weight of two are the out of service violations where the truck or the driver has been placed out of service roadside, which are generally going to be the more serious ones. Right. We're not letting the truck or the driver move because the violation is so serious. Uh, so serious. Those are going to carry a weight of two. And then there are certain driver qualification um, or unsafe driving uh, violations that are not necessarily out of service conditions but are disqualifying for that particular driver. There's a list of them that have been in the regulations for years, things like you, um, using a handheld device while you're driving a commercial motor vehicle. Obviously, we don't want that type of conduct. So those are considered disqualifying, and those will also carry a weight of two under this new uh, revised methodology. All other types of violations are generally going to carry a severity weight of one. Hmm. So that's how okay. the new severity weights will work. Um, and again, we're just kind of doing high level here. This oh, gets yeah, really absolutely. complex. There's, there's uh, DOT has, if you're interested, they've, they've set up a new website explaining how this all works, and they've got an entire new methodology document where they walk through each of these points. That's right. Uh, so that's the third, what I would consider uh, significant change. The fourth are what they are calling, what the DOT is calling proportionate percentiles. Um, and this is intended to cure another problem with the existing SMS system, which um, a lot of folks have complained about over the years, rightfully so, which is a situation where right now we have what are called safety event groups in SMS, where we are grouping motor carriers of similar operating characteristics with one another, rather than comparing you know, it, it would be fundamentally unfair if we are treating a motor carrier that only has a couple of uh, inspections with violations against a carrier, a large behemoth carrier that has thousands of violations with, uh, or thousands of inspections with violations. It's just not fair to compare them to one another when we are talking about prioritizing them for enforcement. That doesn't give us the, a, a good glimpse of what we need to do. So we have historically had dealt with this through these safety event groups, where in each of those seven basics, you are first placed into a safety event group with your peers based on how many inspections you have had with violations in that particular category. So for example, a carrier that has had 10 inspections with hours of service violations over the last two years will normally be compared against other carriers that have a similar number of inspections, maybe eight inspections with hours of service violations, so that we don't have a carrier with eight inspections with violations against a carrier with a thousand inspections. So that has been done through the sa these safety event groups. But what we found is that 
Sometimes motor carriers would, because they get one more inspection, for example, that would jump them up to the next safety event group. And then we would see wild swings in their CSA scores because of the fact that they just jumped up to the next safety event group. Now they're being compared against a, an entirely different set of motor carriers, so that has a big impact on their CSA scores. And many argued that that wasn't fair because the only thing that had changed was they got one more inspection with the violation. Right. They shouldn't have seen a huge swing in their CSA scores. So all How that, are they fixing that? <laughs> yes, so they are fixing it by moving to what they call a proportionate percentile score. Um, and <laughs> this is what I found to be the most complex part of the potential changes here. So I'm not even going to try and, and lay it all out here. There's a very specific calculation that is built into the proposal here. You can see it if you go into the FMCSA's website that they set up, how they're looking at doing this. But just know for purposes of our discussion today, they're trying to get rid of or to temper those huge swings that come when you are moving between safety event groups. So they're going to do that by changing the way that we calculate a motor carrier's percentile. Uh, on a monthly basis. So, But uh, it's still a system basically where carriers are, are compared to each other, I guess. There are still going to be safety event groups, and we are still going to be issuing percentile scores, essentially telling you how you are performing relative to your peers. If you're in the 90th percentile in the hours of service category, for example, that means you are performing worse than 90% of your safety event group in that category. It's still going to be doing that fundamentally, but the way that we calculate the percentile is going to be changed. It's going to be a more complex calculation now so that we don't see those big swings in CSA percentile scores when a carrier just gets one additional inspection, for example. And then the last um, big change is um, potential changes to the intervention thresholds. Um, you're familiar with the concept now. This is how it works in the current SMS system. The system sets what are called intervention thresholds in each of those seven basics. And those intervention thresholds are set at a percentile where the DOT says that if on any given month a motor carrier exceeds that intervention threshold, we're going to put a warning triangle on their account, and that means that they are now prioritized for enforcement. So that's what you're trying to avoid if you're a, a motor carrier is, is to avoid having your score in any of the seven categories exceed those intervention thresholds on a particular month. And those intervention thresholds change based on the basic, they're different for each basic, and they also change based on what type of carrier we're dealing with, whether it be a general commodity carrier, a passenger carrier, or a hazmat carrier. So you have separate intervention thresholds in each basic and then separate intervention thresholds for those three categories of carriers. Um, those have remained relatively unchanged over the last 13 years, but the FMCSA is proposing what I would consider pretty minor changes to those thresholds, but changes nonetheless. And it's not to all of the thresholds. Thresholds for the unsafe driving, crash indicator, and hours of service categories are going to remain the same as where they are now. Um, and then the ones that are going to be changing are in the driver fitness threshold. There's going to be um, certain increases to where the, the current threshold is. For example, for general commodity carriers, the driver fitness threshold currently is at 80%. Um, the FMCSA is proposing increasing that to 90%. So you can kind of think of it like, you know, currently the worst 20% carriers in the country that are performing in the driver fitness category are going to be prioritized for enforcement because we set that threshold at 80%. So if you're in the worst, if you're in the bottom 20% of carriers in that category, you're going to get prioritized for enforcement. We're moving that up to 90%. So now only the worst 10% of motor carriers are going to be prioritized for enforcement. So that's in the in the driver fitness category, and then there's going to be some changes to the hazmat compliance threshold uh, thresholds. That's increasing also from 80% to 90%. So in other words, we're limiting the universe of carriers that we're going to prioritize for enforcement in those two categories, essentially. Do you think they're just trying to, you know, zero in more on, on... Yeah, and that's there what are they... so many carriers they have to try to... That, that's what they say in the rule. It's not even a, really a rule. Right, right. This Proposal? Is not a... 
in their proposal um, is that that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to refine the system, really hone in on the carriers that they know from all of this data that they've gather, gathered over the years are the most likely to be um, involved in a, in a future crash. These are the ones that we want to target. We've got a better sense, having done this now for 13 years, of who those carriers are, and these are the changes the FMCSA thinks will get them closer to that point of being able to more, um, you know, tighten their focus, essentially. All right. So there's your, your five biggest things. Um, as overall, any, uh, I mean, what do you think? Or does this look like some good changes? Do you think um, uh, trucking industry overall is just going to like them or not? I think, you know, from my perspective, um, obviously still digging into exactly right. what, how this is all going to change. Um, and I'm going to reserve my judgment entirely until I actually put in some of my motor carrier clients data <laughs> and see how it changes. Uh, their, good point. Uh, but regardless, I think for now, what it looks like <clears throat> is that the agency's moving SMS in the right direction based on some of the legitimate concerns that the industry has had over the years, um, particularly with the severity weights and the subjectivity of that. So at, at least on paper, it looks like we're moving it in the right direction. What I fear is that because as I dig into this more, here's here's my fear. I fear what we are setting the stage for is for the FMC to say, okay, we fixed the problems that Congress and that the industry has had. Now we feel comfortable tying a motor carrier safety rating to this data, to the SMS data, right, which, which is something we have never had. But what that was, yeah, this has been the intention for quite a while. But yeah, they said, well, be, there's problems with it, so we're not going to do that yet. So yeah, I, I fear that they think that they that these solutions alone get them to a place where they can now safely tie a motor carrier safety rating to this data. I don't think that even with these changes, we are to that point because there are still a lot of legitimate concerns out there. The one that comes to mind is the data queue system, the system that we, that regulated carriers use to challenge erroneous data in the system. Right. Um, in my view, that, that program suffers um, from a lack of due process. And if we don't fix that program first, then I would not want to see us tie a motor carrier safety rating to this, uh, to these SMS scores. Now, to be clear, FMCSA has not proposed that yet, but I'm worried that that's the road we're going down and we'll just, you know, time will tell, but I just don't think that these changes are sufficient enough to do that, but we'll see. Yeah. I said that, that has been something that they had talked about when they, first put out CSA 2020. So that's a logical thought of where they their minds may eventually be going. All right. Well, um, there's a lot more to these proposed changes, um, but we're out of time for today. Thanks, Brandon, for joining me. Uh, you can find out more at trucksafe.com, including a special episode of Truck Safe Live dealing with these changes. You can also learn more at truckinginfo.com. We've uh, also got links to uh, the actual proposal as well if you want to dig through that thanks brandon and uh thanks everyone for listening thanks deborah